It's time to put down the coffee and get some cables connected. Hey guys, back in the data center, coming you to just, just show a picture, right? As you get into NetBox, a lot of people step into it because they're allured by the IP address management. And then they discover, oh, I can do VLANs. And then they discover, oh, I can actually document what equipment is where. And, and, and then, oh my gosh, and then I can document what's connected to what and what powers what. And it's almost like, oh, poof. And, and, and pretty soon people are like, this is not just something where I can document what IP addresses are being used. This is something that is a big project and, and, and can have a lot of valuable stuff. And, and let, me, let me tell you right now, as we're starting to get into the connections that power your system, right? How to connect cables together. Don't, I'm not, I'm not gonna say it this way because I, I realize everybody's different. Everybody's got only so much time in a day, right? But don't under, underplay, don't, don't devalue is, is what I'm trying to say. The value that there is in documenting what's connected to what. It does, it does a couple things. One is the obvious. You can actually go in and say, oh, okay, I've got, I've got you know, this port right here that, that connects down to that server. So if I have a problem with that server, I know exactly where to go without you know, trying. I mean, can you imagine trying to, to fish cables through here and figure out what's connected to what? It's like, no way. I'd, I'd much rather just be like, oh, yeah, it's that port right there. Click, let me move it to a different interface. So there's, there's the obvious value there, right? But the second thing that happens when you document your cabling inside of NetBox is you become a whole lot more disciplined because there's gonna be there's gonna be some time that it takes to get you putting in there what's connected to what. And so you're gonna be far more protective, far more uh, proactive with, with ensuring that these cables stay the way they are and that any change that happens is one that's planned and not done haphazardly. The way that box does cabling is interesting. It's not counterintuitive, it's just, it's just different in the way that it approaches it. And that's why I, I called this section, Connecting NetBox Cables, Two Strategies for Cabling. So let me, let me actually start off uh, by just bringing up NetBox into the screen. Here we go. Uh, because a lot of people, when they think, okay, I'm, I'm, it's time to connect the cables, they'll come over here to Connections, Cables, click on that, and then sure enough, it's blank. There's no button to add. And that's because this section right here, is a report of the cables that are connected. You actually connect the cables uh, to show the device connections from the devices themselves. As a matter of fact, like I said, there are two strategies for cabling. So let's look at the first one. The first strategy, <clears throat> as I choke, uh, is to connect the devices directly. This is really useful when you have, you know, a rack of equipment, there's your, there's your router sitting right there and you're plugging it straight into the switch below, or there's a switch up here at the top of the rack and that comes over here to another top of the rack switch and you, you have those devices connected uh, directly together. Uh, that's done simply by going into NetBox. Let me bring this up right here. Um, and I'm going to start back at the rack, kind of focus in right there. There's our MDF rack one. Let's say that I want to connect my router 01 uh, to, to a couple of things. Let's actually use this as, as a little demonstration. Let's, let's say here, let me, uh, let me grab my pen and, and go with a different color. Let's say that we actually have a cable modem mounted on the wall, right? Um, the reason I'm saying that is it's not actually in the rack. It doesn't consume a use. So I'm not going to add it to there, but that plugs into the ethernet zero port on my router. And then the ethernet one port plugs directly down here to, uh, to, to switch 01, right? And we'll, we'll just say uh, on gigabit zero slash one on there, right? So everybody got, got what, what we're connected. This is the first, probably the easiest connection type that's there. So let me hide my chicken scratch for just a minute and let's do it. So first thing I wanna do is I wanna add that cable modem. It actually is gonna show up here as a non-racked device. But to do that, you can see if I click on add, it's gonna ask me for a device role and a device type. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to the devices and let's create a device role. Um, and I'm just going to name this role uh, peripheral device. So let's add this in. We'll call it peripheral. Hopefully I've spelled that right. Uh, device because I think we can use it for a lot of things. I'm going to use the color of uh, purple. Let's go right there. How about purple? Just so it stands out in the list. Not a VM world. I'll click on create. We've now got the role available to us. Uh, and now I'm going to go and add, uh, well, before I add the device type, because it's going to ask me for a manufacturer, let's just call, let's create a, a, a generic manufacturer called external vendor, right? You'll see why in just a second, because 
I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. When I'm talking about cable modems, DSL modems, you know, other stuff that plugs in, that's just random stuff that ends up in the IT room somehow. That's where external vendor comes in handy, right? Um, so now I'm going to come down here and go to the device type. The type of device that I'm going to add in is going to be this external vendor model. Let's just say cable uh, slash DSL modem. All right, we'll, we'll use one for, for both. I'm gonna change the rack height to zero. It's not full depth. This is an option. You can type that in there, uh, which allows you to pretty much not consume rack space. Matter of fact, it'll prevent you from consuming rack space. Uh, so, so be careful when you do that. Watch, watch what I'm gonna do now. So I've added this in. And actually, before I go any further, to this device, I'm gonna add an interface. We'll just call it ETH0, right? This will be, let's just make it a one gigabit per second port, right? So that way I have a device. It has an ethernet port so I can represent things. Okay, let's go add that to our rack. So I'm gonna click on racks. Uh, I'll jump back here. Man, this whole time it's just slightly been off. There we go. Um, I'm gonna go back to the MDF rack and instead of putting it in here, matter of fact, let's let's just pretend that I wanted to add it in here. I'm gonna say I wanna add, uh, let's, let's say my peripheral device and it'll be my cable modem, right? Click on create, watch what happens. Uh, I was like, wait, it worked. No, it actually didn't work. It says, hey, lowest number, it's, it's occupied. It says a U0 device type cannot be assigned to a rack position. So it actually has some error checking uh, put in there to, to, to prevent that. So I'm gonna go to the non-rack device. Now I can add that in and say uh, the device type is a cable modem, uh, peripheral device, right? Oh, I have two of them. I must have added it in before him. So I'll click on that, click on uh, create. And now I've got that cable modem in the list. You can see ETH0 is available. But now let's get back to our original goal here. I've got the MDF rack. My goal was to show, uh, uh, if I can scroll down in here, it was to show that this guy right there, the RT01 was connected to the Ethernet 0 interface of this guy uh, uh, and, and plugged into ETH0 on the uh, cable modem itself. So I'm going to go to RT01, and I could do this from the cable modem as well. But right here are the interfaces. And remember, those show up because of the device type that I created. I added those to the template. I'm gonna scroll over here to the right and click on this double arrow connection, right? It says, what do you wanna connect? Interface, front port, rear port, circuit termination. Well, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this in just a second. For now, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna connect the interface. And now it's saying, okay, what's it connected to? I'm gonna click on, uh, that'll be, as I drop down in the list, device of cable DSL modem, right? Uh, interface on there, ETH0, that's the one that I created, right? Now, if I wanted to, I could get in and, and say, this is, you know, what kind of cabling it is, you know, what, whether it's DAC, you know, what, what kind of, so there's a lot of stuff that I could add to this. I could even add a color of cable if I wanted it to stand out in the list, same color options. But for now, I'm just gonna click on connect and now I've created my first physical connection, right? I can now come down here and see that E0 is connected to the cable DSL modem. Now, if I jump back to Netbox, you notice that right here I have cables, click on that, and sure enough, I see my first cable connection that's, that's placed right here. Over here on the right, notice all of these these filters that I can put in. Because you can imagine in a production environment, it's not going to take too long for this cabling brrr, to fill up with tons of cables if you're using it as you should. So using these filters to say, well, show me, you know, this specific rack, show me the specific color. Ah, show me the specific device. This is cool. Do you see what it, you see what's possible uh, as you do this? This is more of a reporting tool than it is anything else. So let's let's get back to the the other goal, right? I'm gonna click on this. Let me uh, bring my scribbles back into the picture. Scroll down, right about there. So the Ethernet one port on the RTO one needs to connect to gigabit zero slash one on the switch. And I think you guys have the idea of this, right? Click on this right here. Ethernet one, that'll be my internal connection. Oh, click the wrong spot. Let's click on connect. Interface, we're gonna go to SW01. And again, the interface from the device type are added right there. I could put the length of cable, everything is, is able to be documented right here. But I'll click on connect, bada bing, we now have two cable connections and now we've got this in, in place, right? So where we can zoom in and actually see our cable map slowly being built through Netbox. This is cool. Now I want to talk about the Sine the Sinekin, the second type of uh, uh, cabling connection that you can have, and that is through a patch panel. Netbox can get some serious 
through documentation. Now, let me come back to the slide and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, this is the simple way, direct connection between devices. In a lot of data centers, this is all you have. But as the data center gets bigger and bigger, you might end up with things that are like this, where you actually have device connections that come not direct. Whoa, man, I got a big, big pin there. Hang on, let me clear that off. Um, device connections that go from the device, not directly to the other device, it actually comes into a patch panel. And if you haven't seen a patch panel before, you, you, can, you can know that patch panels uh, usually are, are simple like this, where you've got port one on the, on the front that connects to port one on the back and port two on the front that connects to port two on the back. Uh, but sometimes you might end up with not so simple uh, uh, cables like this, where in the, you can have a patch panel where you have a whole bunch of, of ports on the back that connect to a single port on the front. Either way, NetBox is geared to handle it, right? This is done through front and rear ports. The first thing we have to do, if we're gonna connect this, so, so let, me, let, me, um, let, let me first off show a description. Let's, let's say, uh, come back to my rack right here. Let's say that I have uh, I have a connection coming uh, like this, and I've got I've got switch one that actually goes up here to uh, the front of the patch panel, right? So that'll come in on let's just say front port 24, and I'm noting this for a reason, right? On the back side of that, maybe maybe on the rear, maybe we've got some keystone jacks, maybe it's a punch down, it doesn't really matter. On the back side, I'm going to have the rear port 24 connected to the back side of the rear port. 24 up here and maybe that comes out of the front port and then comes back down here to switch two. <laughs> now uh, 20 let's just let's just keep it 24 the whole way so I don't get lost right now you might be sitting like you're like why would you do something like that Jeremy in this case it's just for the demonstration usually if you're going to do something like that you're going to go into the patch panel that then fishes off to some other rack right and then in that rack it comes into another patch panel and then comes down you see where I'm going with this, right? You would, unless you're a, 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 a sadist or something, you wouldn't, you wouldn't come in here and do this to yourself uh, within one rack. But nonetheless, we'll use this for our demonstration. The first thing that we need to do is modify our patch panels. Because one thing I didn't do when I first created them, as in created the device type, is add front and rear ports to them. Um, you'll also see one of the things that you'll want to do um, and actually, I'll, I'll even do that. Nah, yeah, I'll, might as well do that right now. I'm going to add a name to it. I'm just going to call this uh, uh, "2U Patch Panel Bottom," right? And you'll see why I'm doing this in just a second. Um, because right, if we if we weren't documenting front and rear ports, then then we wouldn't really have to worry about the names because they were essentially furniture. They're invisible to us, right? "2U Patch Panel Top." right? So that way we know which one is which. Now, if I come back and look at my rack, now I can see, okay, this is the patch panel at the top. This is a patch panel at the bottom. Okay. That you'll see why that's relevant in just a second. Now I'm going to go into both of those patch panels and I'm going to add the components. Now, now normally, normally you would have done this in the device type. So when you created these patch panel, the actual devices, all of these would have followed it. But since we didn't do that, I'm going to go to the patch panel itself and I'm going to click on add components. And I'm going to add the rear ports first. And uh, you'll see why I'm doing this in, in just a second. So I'll put uh, RP, bra uh, let's do brace one through 48, right? I'm going to create 48 rear ports because it's a 2U patch panel, right? Saying what type of, you know, what type of um, uh, cabling are you using? And this is where you would go, you know, eight position, eight contact or 10 punch down block, you know, BNC. You have all the options of cable types and how many positions you know, if, you, if you're doing something crazy like that, that cable I showed you with the MPO uh, fiber cable, then, then, uh, then you can actually have more than one front port wrap, uh, uh, mapped to a uh, rear port, or I should say more rear ports mapped to a front port, right? So we're not going to do that. I'm just going to create um, these rear ports right now. And you can see, shoot, I now have a ton of rear ports on here. Now I'm going to add in the front ports and I'll call it FP brace one through 48 close brace. And it says what, okay, line them up to the rear ports. I'm just going to select them all, right? Which is just going to do a one-to-one -one mapping of, uh, of the, the front to rear all the way through, right? So I'll click on create. 
And now we are back here with all the, the uh, front ports lined up to the rear ports. Front port 23 lined up to rear port 23, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You see how that, that goes all the way down. I'm gonna do that to the other patch panel, this top patch panel, add components, start with the rear ports. And again, we'll name them the same thing. One through 48, close brace, create. And then we will add in the front ports. FP, brace one through 48, close brace. We'll select all the rear ports, create, and now they are all lined up. Okay, we've now added those to our patch panels. And the reason I didn't show you that when I was showing you adding interfaces way back is I was trying to keep it to the core three. I was like, we'll talk about this one later because it can be kind of confusing if you haven't seen that before. Now, let's get back to our scenario. I'm gonna go back here to the racks. I'm gonna go to the MDF rack. And we had said, hang on, let me get my chicken scratch here and line it back up again. Uh, we had said that switch... There we go. Switch one. <laughs> How did I do this? Something like that. Uh, switch one was going to go. Uh, I'm, I'm, nah, I'm, I'm totally throwing myself off here. There we go. Switch one was going into the bottom patch panel, front port 24, which has the rear port connected to the top patch panel, which then has the front port connected down to switch two. I actually didn't even say what interface. Let's just say port 24 for everything, right? So, so if I'm wanting to do that, what I need to do, hang on, let me hide this. I'm going to go to the switch one and I'm going to say, okay, port 24. So gigabit ethernet 24 is going to connect to the front port. Ah, now I see it. Okay. To the front port of the bottom. And now do you see why I assigned the names to the patch panel? If you don't, it just says to you patch panel and you don't know which one you're picking. So I'm going to say, I'm going to go to the bottom, right? Uh, of, of that patch panel. I'm going to connect it to front port 24 connect. We now have our cable connected. Now I'm going to go back here and say, okay, the patch panel bottom, I'm going to go to the uh, rear panel 24, connect that guy to the rear panel of the top port 24. Oh man, you see where drawing this out on paper can really help. Okay, good. Okay. And then, so now, now I can go, I could either go to the, to the top patch panel, or I could come down here to switch three, which we were wanting to connect it in. Right. So I'll go to switch three, might as well. Um, and say gigabit ethernet 24 right here is connected to the front port of the top panel front port 24. I'm glad we just kept it 24 the whole way through. Otherwise you need a spreadsheet or something to keep all of this stuff straight. That is now the second way as I, as I come back here and, and look at the cables, the second way that I can notate what is connected to what, but this time, instead of just saying what's connected to what I can say through what, where I can show it coming in to the, to the, uh, the front port of the patch panel, out the rear port, to another rear port, and through the front port. And, and you can imagine, I mean, if there's more and more uh, patch panels all the way through, you could take this to the cows come home, right? To make sure that you have that cleanly documented all the way through the network. Um, but it definitely encourages you to have a clean network uh, to, to keep those cable paths from becoming too complex. So two methods, the simple way, and then including patch panels, if you, if you want to do that, not all organizations will do that. What I'd like you to do before you, before you leave this uh, video is I'd like you to go to your Netbox instance and first off, connect, uh, create cabled connection between two devices. This is the simple way, right? Uh, create a cabled connection between two devices. Hopefully it mirrors what you actually have running. Um, but if not, just get the experience of doing that. Then do the second way, add a front port and a rear port to a patch panel and create a full cable path moving from device to patch panel, to patch panel, to device. Now you could also have, if you've ever seen those patch panels that are just literally an empty plate with keystone jacks all the way through, you could have something that comes into, you know, device to the rear port, to the front port, to the device. You don't have to have two patch panels in that case. Um, and if you'd like to do that, feel free to do it. The main thing I want you to do is get this experience because otherwise it'll get scrambled in your mind and you'll go to do it in production. And it's going to be like, ah, I can't even remember how to do it. Right. Do it once. It sticks forever. It's that simple.